Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to tonight's second half. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. The merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click the like button. It takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the exciting and informative uploads I put out twice daily, click that bell icon. And finally, last but definitely not least, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go, and guys, they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with tonight's second half, shall we? Alright guys, so for the last, gosh, two weeks, I've been working periodically uh, when I'm not visiting my pops in the hospital um, on the book for Victor, or Victor's book. And I've gone through about every printed out email, uh, all of our experiences that we've talked on the phone and stuff like that. And I stumbled upon the very first time Victor was on this channel. And it is quite, quite informative. Um, he actually... I feel like on the first upload that he was on here, I don't think he intended on coming back. So he really shared a ton of information. So um, I didn't really work too much on the book today. I did take, take it easy a little bit. Watched a movie, a great movie. If you guys want to watch a great kind of funny and really kind of mind one that'll get you thinking don't look up amazing movie um anyway guys here is today's second half all right guys so here is the real deal i have william right with me uh via the telephone william would you like to say hi hello everybody and we figured out a way of doing the q a um, with myself and him, and that way you guys know that for any doubters that he is a real person and that I'm just not making this up, and uh, that way there's a voice to the word. So we'll start with some Q&A, and uh, you guys will get to meet William through the upload. All right, um, first question we have for the day is Leanne Coffey. I actually live 10 minutes from Taylor. This is a small quarter mile community. Crazy I came across this. There is an online article about 10 years ago. I listened to the story. The online article doesn't talk about this, but it does tell of several cow mutilations. My daughter lives halfway between Taylor and my house. I have a picture on my phone I took, I sent it to Scott Carpenter and another channel. They both said it looks like a pareidolia. I think that's how you spell it. Anyway, it's a creepy pic, looks like a dog in the face to me. Maybe I'm just seeing things. To add, when I took the picture, I caught movement in the woods. The reason I stopped and was trembling inside when I took it. I didn't see anything at the times, but later viewed it. Okay. And any response on that, William? Well, you can... The articles most of the time on this is short, especially about cow mutilations. You don't see much, hear much about them. They don't print much. Uh, what they do print, just limited. As far as what you're seeing, it could be 
something that you visibly see it could be there or it couldn't be there you know it's it's uh in the eye of the beholder a lot of times so it's uh Without seeing it myself, I couldn't tell you what it is. I'd like to see that image to where I could tell you more of what I'm seeing. Right. If my, that would be possible, Leanne. Yeah, and my email is in the description below. All you'd have to do is send it to me, um, and then I'll email it right over to William. And then uh, he can get back to you on that. All right. Uh, James Shushin, next question. Are the werewolf human, then change, or just as an animal? James are always an animal. They don't they don't change. They're, it's not like the movies where they go back and forth. They're they're once a beast, always a beast. Okay. Adam, here we go. Hello, Jeff and William. If this has been asked and answered, apologies. I'm curious as to the reasons for the dog man and werewolves, a secret from the public. I read theories about Bigfoot being kept secret so timber and mining industries wouldn't be held back due to habitat loss of endangered species, not to mention that all three of these cryptids are obviously sentient and would, without a doubt, be granted rights if officially recognized. Should all sentient species be given rights, morally and philosophically? Oh my goodness! Philosophically, we would likely all agree, but this brand of new territory for us. Any race more powerful than us, we naturally consider dangerous. Yes, they can kick our asses. Does this give us the right to destroy them? Destroy an entire sentient species? It's dangerously close to genocide if you acknowledge sentience, is it not? Ownership of Dogman by the United States government would then also be a bit sticky wicky. I would think. I feel like these beings are just an aggressive and, yes, dangerous race like Kilgans. If I will, acknowledgement, respect, and diplomacy would seem their due. Full disclosure, I hunt for substance and I fish for both food and sport. Not an activist in any regard. I feel like this issue is verboten to speak of as I rarely hear it addressed. Thank you for your time and consideration to answer. Guys, if I could add this, my first thought upon hearing William through this channel was, wow, is this slow disclosure to acclimate the public about these beings? With the COVID-19 virus comes thermal imaging products to take your temperature as you walk through store entrances or any public place. The price of these products is typically high for the average consumer. This will change, though, soon. Every hunter and hiker will have one on their pack or in their scopes. Many of these cryptids will then likely end up on YouTube or shot in the near future once a vaccine allows for outings again. Has this scenario been discussed, William? Has thermal imaging sped up the need for soft disclosure? Is that partially why you are permitted to share your stories? So, William, yeah. why did you approach me and decide to come out with all of these? Was it was it someone told you, or it was discussed between? I was full bird colonel at the time, and me and my CEO had discussed it, which he had to, went to the lieutenant general at the time and discussed it. And we had all sat down and had racked our brains for probably a year or more. And I came up with this theory that if we could get it out to the public, that a small group of people would do better getting this out to the 
to more people individually, one-on-one, that it would work better. And uh, it, it, it will. Individuals talking to one-on-one works better than a mass disclosure. So, uh, uh, it, it's just uh, a better way of doing things. It, it is kind of a slow disclosure, I guess, is how you would prefer to put, uh, say it. Uh, the thermal imaging, I doubt that that will have any effect upon the hunting industry scopes, anything to that effect. I don't foresee that. We, we have talked about it and, uh, we don't see that taking place. As far as, uh, keeping it a secret from the public, it's, uh, same thing as Bigfoot. It, it's known as a species. The timber industry will be shut down. Look at the little owl up in Oregon. It shut the whole state's timber industry down. The whole state on count of one little owl. So what do you imagine if this was found to be an endangered species? What do you think it would be? The whole industry would go down. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. All right. Well, because we, and, you know, and I've shared this with you, you know, where I live in upstate New York, we have the uh, Sasquatch in the town of Fort Ann. There, there's just, you know, forbidden to even hunt it. And, you know, if anyone, the state police would be called on them. And that is, that's, you know, from the mayor, I think even from the governor of New York, you know, so it's, it's absolutely true. Um, yeah, there's, there's two other states, I think, that have that also, uh, about the Sasquatch. Yeah. Is Maine one of them, do you know? I think it's Maine and either Oregon or Washington. Okay, yeah. I think it is. All right. Well, Lost Soul is our next question. I was thinking about Jeff and Bill, and I hope you're both all right. Bill. Why don't you guys have medevacs come get the wounded? We do when they're wounded, <laughs> uh, and we have them. We have them flown out when we can get into them with the with the copters. We have everybody flown out, uh, either wounded and or dead. Right. I think a lot of the people were when um. You shared the the hunt when um, your your agent got killed, um, Ellis, and everyone was wondering why you guys weren't immediately medevaced out. And you know there was a lot of concern and questions surrounding that. Um, you know, it's... I, I I didn't have I lost we I lost both radios. I couldn't find Ellis. I couldn't find mine. Right. And neither one of us could, uh, you know, I couldn't find neither satellite radio, so I had no way of calling out. Right. So that was the only way I had to get out was to walk. Right. All right. And the next question is from Chad Hansen. William, does the Gugwe count and as one of the big three, as it usually referred to as Bigfoot, and have you hunted or encountered them? I am in Utah, and dogman and werewolf sightings or encounters are basically unheard of. Why is this? Is the population low here? The Gugly is just uh, another word for Bigfoot. Bigfoot's a Bigfoot. There's not different types. Uh, I've, I've not figured out how people 
interpret them differently. After all these years, and uh, as far as Utah, there's as many werewolves, dogmen in that area as any place else in the country. Right. So, just not seen them. All right, and uh, Diane Russo asks. I have heard several encounters about Taylor, Mississippi and people having to leave their properties, ironically, also in Taylor, Texas and Taylor, Michigan. Yeah, somebody's put strings together. Seems like every town that has a threesome of cities in the United States is a hot spot. for these critters. So if you want to uh, do some research, find out you can find the hot spots for these things. Okay. Bill Hogue, where can I listen about the caveman clan in North Carolina? It's not a cleared case yet, Bill, so here. I hadn't cleared it from the files yet, so it's not been able to be cleared yet. All right. And it was in Tennessee also, by the way. Yep. By, was it by Cadiz Cove? No. It was just south of Cades Cove. Right. All right. Grammy 3G. Um, these presidents need to be up close and personal with these things to be able to make a determination on whether these things are viable to humankind. They are territorial creatures and wouldn't have any issue in wiping out the human race. Are the presidents of any understanding what danger they pose to the masses? And would it be different if they were to have an encounter on their own? Not a good idea to go out uneducated these days when hiking or camping with loved ones. These things can track anything and anyone. They're better than bloodhounds. All the presidents have the right to meet and greet. They have since 1952. Only once chose to do that, and that was the senior Bush. He came, went in, met, and grit. Uh, the only one of the big three that is territorial is the Bigfoot. The others are nomadic. And they don't want to see you any more than you want to see it. And at present time, they are no danger to the masses. There is an occasional one that goes offline, and yes, it does something very bad, and it pays with its life. And it's a terrible thing that we lose an American life to it. But in all things, even war and all, you lose human lives. People, we're trying to educate people one at a time. Yep, that's what this channel's about, is just education, you know, and I'm glad education. you I'm glad you reached out to me so we could share it, you know. It's I'm always learning. I was talking to somebody earlier today and I said I don't claim I know anything. You know, I'm constantly learning. Anytime I read something that you sent me or when we have the rare occasion to talk on the phone, you know, from even subscribers, it's just, you know, it's, you're always learning. And I'm sure you're always learning stuff too, you know. Yeah, I'm just, always. <laughs> you know, I'm sure. So the uh, the next question is going to be broken down into two questions. So, uh uh, Blonde Bunny, first of all, do you know if there is any dogman, werewolf, or Bigfoot in Sweden? And if so, 
Are they tag tracked by any government? And where are they located? Well, I have received calls from there asking for advice on them. So I would say yes, they are in there. If they're tagged, I'm not aware of that. And I don't think y'all have a agency like ours that does the uh, same thing we do now. All right. And second part of the question, if there is any encounter with an aggressive individual of those three, can you do anything to get out of there alive? I mean, to try to run away seems pretty pointless, but like if you have an encounter with a bear, they say you should play dead or curl up and keep your arms and legs close to your body, cover up your neck and so on. Would that work with the big three? <clears throat> well, with the with any of them, if you hear the silence, the best thing to do is just stop dead still in your tracks. Take note of your surroundings, see if you see anything. And if you don't, just slowly, and I mean slowly, back out of where you are. Take a note behind you and to your sides, because most of the time, that's where your dogmen will be, is behind you and to your sides. Your werewolves, your dogmen, uh, and your Bigfoot will be in front of you. They're, they're not afraid to come at you head on. <clears throat> but the best thing, if you, if you do spot one, don't look at it in the eyes. Duck your head. Try to look at it like you're looking out from underneath a baseball cap. Watch it as long as it's not moving towards you. Just keep slowly backing up. If it ever takes a step, stop. Get ready to defend yourself. All right. And the third part of the question, I didn't realize there was a third part is do they feel any remorse at all if they hurt a human, even if they do it in rage, tagged or wild? Sebastian did when he was prodded. He showed it afterwards, after the fact. So I would say yes to that question. Okay. Mike Pedroza. What was the problem in Santa Cruz? That's not a cleared case yet. Okay. Randy Beard. Something is very strange about all of these dogman scenarios. The black ops military complex creates these creatures. And the same black ops. Government hires William and others to kill these rogue creatures only when they kill innocent people or livestock. I still say gather up many good hunters across America and kill every one of these dogman slash werewolves before they kill any other innocent people, which they all will do according to many of the stories that Jeff reads. Super soldiers will never be needed as there is a gun behind every tree in America if the need arises. I agree, Randy. There would be a gun behind every tree if the need arises. But why put American lives in danger when I can take 48,000 into battle and save all them American lives? You tell me a good reason for that for getting all them Americans killed when I can take animals that'll do seven <clears throat> times what one American will do. You explain that to me. I agree. I agree. And I was, I, I got a couple of things I want to just, I want you to clarify as well, if you would. Um, the sentence, uh, get all the good hunters across America to try to kill every one of these. 
Now, you and I have talked twice about this, and I've tried to um, kind of, you know, let people know when would be a good time to actually kill one of these creatures. Um, if you could, if you could kind of like, uh, okay. I know what you're you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you're out and about, if you're at home and you've got, you're outside and one of these things approaches, I in no way, shape or form am going to say anything. If you kill one, if it's coming at you, your property, your family, your livestock, anything. If you kill it within your means, uh, you know, do what you have to to protect you and yours. You know, do it. No questions asked. Protect yourself and you. If it's within your capability. But once that, you lose sight of that thing, if you have to run in your home and go get a gun and come back out and it's killed your dog, then it becomes a nuisance. And that animal or werewolf or dog man or Bigfoot has left, it's not your problem anymore. I mean, it's a problem to you, but you go and hunting it, you're putting yourself in a world of danger, severe danger. Right. So, people don't, it takes these guys that goes on these first hunts. That is their most dangerous hunt ever. That's their most dangerous. And to hunt the dog man, they are in packs. There's never just one. There's usually three, five, ten, fifteen. You'll see the one, but you won't see the three that's behind you. That's why. We train. We train for this, and we we see a lot of fatalities to us from this. And I've been lucky. Thirty five years, I've been lucky, and uh, I'm getting old and slow, and it's showing. So. I'm almost glad to be getting into the office, really. But stay, leave it to the, leave it to the ones that's trained to do this, please, please. All right. And um, the next question would be Joe Rotolo. Hey, Jeff and William, any person look uh-huh. Scarborough. Oh. Hang on one second. Oh, here it is. Scarborough. See, he's got a copy of this too, so he's on he's on point. Fantastic yep. episode with Luke's family encounters with the Mississippi Dogman and Woodsman, Bigfoot. Interesting fact is my previous cat was able to open doors. She would jump straight up and use each of the paws in and up a down motion thereby proceeding to turn the handle. Incredible to see this take place. I watched it being performed a half a dozen times. <laughs> I've got a dog that does this. <laughs> so I just wanted to comment on that. The animals are smarter than you think. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So you can, you can see these animals doing it. He's got a cat that does it. I got a dog to live. <laughs> so what's, you know, like, I think that there's been such a stigma 
of people thinking that the dog man and the werewolf and the Sasquatch can't open doors and can't open doors. They can. I'm sure you've seen it. And this and the stigma about them walking in houses twice now and wow, two times in three months now. I've been down there with them in homes. Yeah, Luke. I mean, Luke in Taylor, Mississippi is just, I mean, that poor guy. Jeez. Yeah. So, all right. And Joe, Joe Rotolo. Hey, Jeff and William, any person looking to hunt these things is crazy and is going to die. I know I wouldn't want to come across any of the big three. Friends I tell of this laugh at me, and I tell them at least I know the truth. That's right, Joe. As long as you know the truth, you're safer than most. That's the main thing. Right there. Knowing the truth. And that's a big thing that you're trying to do is you want to just out. educate one person that takes it seriously that can bring it to another person that takes it seriously. That's right. That'll take it seriously. Or pass the word on. I don't care if they're crazy. I don't care what they are. As long as I can get that word out. I don't care what it takes. All right. As long as I get that word out. Next question is from B. Sir William, question for you. If we need to reach the game warden, if there was a cryptid attack, is there some wording to use so they actually listen and believe us or just say a bear is attacking. Thank you for the advice in advance. This is the correct way to do it. Call your law enforcement first. Tell them. Tell them exactly what's going on. Don't lie. Tell them the truth. Then if they tell you to call the game wardens, call the game wardens. If they don't tell you how to proceed, you call the game wardens. Game wardens come out. You tell them, don't lie. Tell them the truth. Let them look around. They know what to look for. They've been trained to look for certain things. When they see these certain things, they've got a number to call. And with this number they call, they know to who to, where the, they know who to call. And they will call us and get in touch with us. Y'all may never see us, but we will come out and we will take care of the problem. All right, now the next one is one that me and Bill had talked about in advance. Uh, Jack Hansen, um, we hope you're listening to this one. We'd like you to send me an email because um, William and myself would like to do a three-way call with you. And uh, this is what Jack has to say. For the folks that are commenting that this episode is a repeat, it's not. Jeff states at the very beginning of the upload that this is a combination of all of the Taylor, Mississippi episodes preceding the new one that comes at the end. The reason for re-narrating is so the audience has the recent stories in mind when William comments on the same case he handled involving Luke's Taylor, Mississippi family. William, question slash suggestion. Jeff, we are not going anywhere. You've got a great show and your listeners are loyal. Just do whatever you need to do to get healthy. Can't wait till you're back, buddy. William, there's a small group of individuals that are working towards the same goal as your agency. That goal, I believe, is to inform a specific group of people. Specifically, those United States citizens that are having encounters and those citizens 
that have been traumatized mentally and physically by these animals. Some of the other individuals are, most notably, David Paul Dees, author of Missing 411 Books and founder of the Can-Am Missing Project, also Steve from the YouTube channel How to Hunt. I do not want to do not want you to use directly any other channels but Jeff's. He's your guy, but I know I want to show a larger group of like-minded people that Jeff's channel is the mouthpiece of all information related to this subject. I contacted David via email on Saturday, May 3rd, 2020. I told David about a government agent from his channel. This first email to David Paldis was the brief explanation of yourself and your goal. His initial response was understandably skeptical. I replied with another email that explained in better detail the goal of you and your agency. I also told Dave that I've heard the total of discourse between you and the listeners over the last three months. I told Dave that you have answered every question that you've been asked without hesitation and with incredible detail and knowledge. The answers have been consistent, accurate, natural, confident, even with similar answers given over time, which is very difficult if lying. I told Dave that I see the same authenticity in William that I saw in Dave initially. I haven't had another response from him, and honestly, I don't know what the best way to go about proving legitimacy to guys like him and Steve from How to Hunt. Maybe that understanding will come over time. But I kind of doubt it. We, the public, are lied to so often that my generation X has less trust for authority now than the baby boomer generation did back in the 60s. David did say that a face-to-face -face meeting between you and him would be something he'd be interested in. I know how busy you are and I know that you may not have the time or inclination to meet and greet, but having that said, the increase in overall outreach to like-minded people by bringing these good guys in a subordinate role to Jeff's channel. That would be significant. Jeffrey Nadalny is your guy for access. He will always be, and rightfully so. But if David P. of the YouTube world knew that William was the key to unlimited information about the Sasquatch and other cryptids, then they would be forced to listen to Jeff's downloads and learn the truth. That would increase Jeff's channel's popularity exponentially. That would also unite all of these different groups that are honestly looking to help people. William, just think about it. I don't know what you could do. Maybe a phone call. You guys probably know the same people. Anything to show Paul Dees and his group that the key to everything they are working for lies in yourself through the platform of Jeffrey Nadalny's channel. That would finally create a force to counter all of the BS these poor people have to deal with while helping Jeff's channel and maintaining your anonymity. This is exactly what your superiors want as an outcome. Thanks for listening, William. I only meant this as a suggestion from someone that listens extensively to all of these channels in this particular niche and saw an opportunity. I'll be available if you need to reach me and need me to reach back out to these guys. I need to talk to Jack and you on the phone together if you can arrange this. This was per William. William, the floor is yours. Yep. Yeah, Jack, I'd, I'd really like to talk to you. I, I've dealt with a couple of the missing 411s, and uh, I, would, I would really like to speak with you and uh, Jeff at the same time. And... Uh, bring some things to the light. Uh, my phone, and it's nothing that I won't bring before the 
subscribers at a little later date, but I would like to bring this before y'all and talk to y'all and bring it to y'all first. So if you could uh, email and make arrangements with Jeff and we could do this, I would greatly appreciate your time, Jack. All right. Yeah, and just my email is in the description below. Just send me an email, and I usually check my email more than once a day, and uh, I'll get that information over to William, and we can get together and discuss what needs to be discussed. Next question is from John Palo. Jeff, I've listened to every episode with William, but it took a while. Since you are just reading from his emails, why don't you compile his emails in text format and put it into your Patreon page? My only comment is that you would need to make a Patreon membership cheaper. That is cost prohibitive right now. That would also solve the problem on run-on questions and answers. Sometimes a poster asks multiple questions, and by the time you get around to reading, the answer to the last question the viewer has forgotten the question and or context keep up the great work William what is the thing in the video listed you know what video I'm talking about right yes sir. okay yeah uh, <clears throat> we've got somebody compiling the questions and answers right now that's uh, the ladies doing that for me or doing it for us uh, and as far, John, as your YouTube that you've asked me to watch, uh, I'm a pretty straightforward shooter. And, uh, I've got some very highly, highly sophisticated equipment I can use. And, uh, that's a person in a suit, buddy. That's, uh. Nothing that's going to make you any money. <laughs> I hate to say that, but I can, uh, I can attest it's a human being in a suit. All right, and I'm going to just interject. Also, my Patreon is literally, you can donate anything to the chan or to the Patreon thing. There is no, um, any you know it's a dollar to 50 cents to whatever you want to donate to it the reason why i'm not putting anything on there is because first i don't have permission from william to disclose all the information on there i you know if you want to hear it hear it on the channel um i don't want anybody to be able to just print out these questions and answers um i'm sure william doesn't either um you know it's it's the answers are right here on the channel so that's it's where it's gonna stay um next question is graphic truth whatever happened to the bigfoot that saved luke i know you took him to virginia to get him patched up did you release him back in the wild or put him into an enclosure hi william be sure to expect the unexpected. Don't let your guard down for a second around an aggressive werewolf. He strikes me as someone that will fake being calm and play nice for a long time before he strikes to make an escape plan or kill you. Okay. Uh, uh, the Bigfoot was taken to Virginia. He was patched up. He was. He was in really bad shape. I didn't. I didn't think he would actually live. I didn't think he'd live through the flight, but he did. Resilient, and uh, we kept him there for five, six, maybe seven weeks. And he was up and about. We did keep him in an enclosure. Had him plenty of room to move around. He was, he was the only one in the enclosure. He was in a eight-acre enclosure. 
and uh, once he got well enough to return to the wild, we tranquilized him, put him back to sleep, loaded him in a helicopter, and took him to the top of Hawk Mountain, which is in North Georgia. It's probably not on any map that I know of, uh, close to Three Forks. That's on the map, and he was released at that location. I uh, went back two or three times, and I've never, never seen him again since then, but he was in good shape. So I'm not worried about him. He, he, he's in good shape. Uh, forgot what. I think the next part of the question was about oh, yeah. Sebastian. The aggressive, yeah, that, the big werewolf, the 9-2, nine 9-3, two, nine three, somewhere in there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not very nice. He's, all he does is threaten and, uh, don't know if I'll ever make friends with him. May not be like Sebastian. May, may be a total different. May not be able to be like that. So, might not have be able to have a friendship like that. So it may be a one time deal for me with Sebastian, so uh, I don't foresee it. I don't have the time to put in. He don't have the depth, you know, the same temperament as Sebastian had. So Yeah, Sebastian's uh, one of a kind, you know, for you. And, yeah, he has been. And it was amazing because Luke, just through email, um, it was really good that Luke got to hear that, you know, his best friend as growing up was safe. And it was just, it was really cool that, you know, he got to hear that, you know, you have a very close friend, you know, yeah. and not many people are... I, I I'd say fortunate to have a friend like that. So, um, yeah, not many people do. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. And, uh, Lilith, a Ram, Mr. Bill, what is the best protection you can put around your home? I know you've said security lights and certain firearms, but would security bars and security doors be of any use? What about ATD cameras that you can have mounted outside of your home? How does your agency handle it if one of these companies gets footage of one of these creatures on a camera? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, well, the best protection is the lights. That's the best thing an individual can do is put up lights, but you need to put them up 12 foot or higher around your home. And uh, the firearms, you know, try to stay away from them, but protect yourself also. The security bars and security doors, that, that might slow them down a little bit, but it ain't going to stop them. And they'll, they have a way of knowing that cameras and trail cams and all that kind of stuff around your home. and They know how to avoid them. They hear them, smell them. And if one of these companies gets footage of one of these things on the camera, they take it to their superiors and their superiors notify a government agency. Okay. Has that happened often? or I don't know, but one time. That I know of All right. that it's happened, and it was from maybe mid torso down. Hmm. All right. Next question is from J Boss. I still want to know if the Southern Bigfoot looks anything like the Mayaka skunk ape photo. If you know anyone who has seen a southern skunk ape, would you please ask? 
I was just wondering if there is a backup plan if they ever had to unleash the beasts and what happens if they won't stop the carnage, especially on American soil. I remember William mentioned that some of them took off in Vietnam. If he's talking about the skunk ache of Florida, it's a big one. It looks like uh, all big I, I, I don't know what people are I, I, I see these pic these pictures that everybody shows, all these different things, but it's not of an actual Bigfoot. I mean, they show pictures of orangutans, of different things, but not of a Bigfoot. A lot of times they, I've seen them call things Bigfoot that's actually a werewolf. So I'm actually wondering if they get some of them mixed up. Yes, there's a backup plan if these things was to go on the carnage here in the U.S. There's backup plans for everything. And the ones that took off in Vietnam, the promise that was made to them werewolves was that they would have their freedom when they completed their missions. Well, their missions, they thought, was a one-time deal, is evidently what they thought. They didn't know that they had to come back and had other missions to complete. So they completed one mission, and zoom, they was gone. They didn't care to come back to the U.S. They just took off where they was at. That's why they never came back to their handlers. All right. And the next question is coming from Tim. William, you can't have two male werewolves interact without them fighting to death, but you can somehow control an army of them into battle. Common sense tells me that makes no sense whatever. Let's say you call at 40,000 plus back to base. That sounds like a huge werewolf battle that no one can cover up. Not to mention, can the facility even hold 40,000 plus? William? Yeah, what it is, the two males that we're talking about are alphas. And they couldn't, you, I can't have them together because of them being alpha. There's no way that uh, they could be that way. Uh, one of them, you know, they're both wild. So there's another reason for it. And as far as bringing them back in to, you know, the, the bred ones can be controlled. That's part of something I cannot totally explain on count of being part of the top secrecy of the system. But yes, the base can house 40,000 easily. Not, I can probably hold at the one facility I can probably hold 160,000 easily at uh, the one Virginia facility alone. I can hold 160,000. All right. And his next question. I went into my ex-girlfriend's yard and her dog was tore up. Is the government going to compensate her? Are they going to compensate people's families of victims being killed by these things? Hell no, they won't. No, Tim, they won't. They sure won't. But, uh, here again, hunting them. You don't need to be, Tim. Me, Tim. 
<sighs> me and Jeff talked about you. And if you had only just reached out to me and said, Bill, I need you to come here. I'd have been there. I'd have came personally. I would have done it. I would have personally came there myself and took care of your problem. You ask good questions. You ask to the point questions. And I would have done that. And I, I don't understand why you wouldn't have done that. You're intelligent. Uh, I, I, instead of putting yourself in harm's way and me having to clean up the mess, I, I just don't understand it. I don't. All right. And uh, the last, the last sentence, and then I'm going to interject too. If you, the government works for us, not the other way around. Do I want an army of werewolves released to fight a foreign army if they invade our country? Hell no. Then we'd have forty thousand werewolves that can't be controlled, and we'll start eating Americans, and then they won't return just like they did in Vietnam. Well, <laughs> yes, I, I work for y'all. That's right, I do. And I appreciate every bit of the work I get. And uh, you should appreciate the world was fighting for you instead of getting American lives killed instead of an animal. And they can be controlled. That's the whole thing people don't understand. They are so easy to control, especially from the breeding program. The ones that went to Vietnam were all wild. I mean, it, it's... And they're not going to start eating Americans. That it, the ones that's killing most people are dogmen. And that's the ones that we have more trouble with than any of them. And I, I, I agree that the dogmen probably shouldn't have been. I'll say that. But the werewolves, that's the ones that can save thousands upon thousands upon thousands of lives. And nobody wants to see the good in it. But anyway, now, um, Tim, if you, Tim, if you still got problems, let me know. Yeah, I I'll was just going to say that. Take care of it. Because I, I emailed or I commented on Tim's comment once and I said, Tim, email me. And I knew, you know, you were having problems. And like Bill just said, we had talked about you. Um, and, you know, if you email me and you're still having problems, email me. I can get in touch with Bill. He'll take care of this. Um, you know, like he said, you, you've been... Uh, nothing but a stand-up guy on this channel amazing questions a really great supporter of me um you know and i understand where you're where the pain is coming from and where you're feeling you know but you got to do it a proper way and you know it'd be like just like if a criminal went in your house and did something crazy there you know, the, uh, you're okay as long as you're in your house or in your yard. But once they leave your yard, then it's, it's not up to you. It's up to the police then, you know, so just plus you don't want to get tore up, you know, so just reach out to me if you've got any more problems and we'll get in touch with Bill and get everything taken care of. All right. So Bill, I want to appreciate, or I want to thank you and I appreciate everything that you've done. Um, I know we've got some more Q and A to do, um, but I know you're busy right now, and I've got some stuff I got to take care of. Um, 
How are you feeling about today's show? You think it went pretty good? I think it went pretty good for somebody scared of a microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. I'm going to let you go, and uh, we'll talk soon, all right? Okay. All right. Bill, good night, everybody. All right. Thank you, Bill. Bye now. All right, guys. Like I said, I mean, it really felt like he almost didn't know if he was going to come back um, and tried to get out as much info as possible. And I was blown away when I found this because I didn't know that I had saved this interview. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't save all of them. I know I saved quite a few, but as of the first interview, I was just like, wait a second. I know I have that file. I have that file on my old laptop. When I started this channel, I started this channel literally with a $10 microphone from Amazon and a laptop that I bought from my brother-in-law or ex-brother-in-law with a cracked screen. And I did everything with those two things. And uh, I vowed that I'd never throw that laptop away. I didn't. I went and found it, charged it up, and sure enough, that file was there. And that's what we just heard. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for all your support, all your wit, your your prayers uh, for my dad. Um, just a really amazing group of people here. And I, I am blessed. So thank you. Guys, stay safe, happy, healthy, and God bless all of you.